I want to address a series of topics, a group of topics under the heading of freedom of conscience. I think that in general, people are quite unaware of the number and magnitude of the obstacles that exist already in this in this domain and just how fast just how quickly normal people are going to see it expand in breadth and depth over where they see it now righteous people well uh, living righteously is going to require increasingly greater sacrifice so you're going to see more and more loss of things that you've taken for granted in life as the required resources to maintain these things increases. So examples of this include your career. Um, some people saw this to a degree during COVID where they were facing moral decisions about whether or not they wanted to comply with requirements that they did not see as justified, and in some cases, which they saw as harmful and or immoral. But you're, you're going to see a confluence of these things. And in summary, or in conjunction with one another, the, the net result is going to be that more often it will be much more difficult to make an honest living. And um, that, that, that's not just because you'll have to jump through hoops that <clears throat> you would r rather not. That's putting it lightly. Um, it's also because increasingly people are going to face the decision of whether they want to do something that they don't believe is just. Um, in terms of what you earn for what you give. So a job, this is this is a new topic that not many people have thought about, but more and more jobs are going to provide less and less value. And you'll be faced with the decision of staying in a job where you know that you're not doing what you claim to be doing or what the entity claims to be doing or not having an income. And many people will sell their souls to, to get their paycheck. And this isn't new, it's, it's been happening for a very long time, but the, the rate of incidence will increase and more and more people will face this. It, historically, most jobs provided a service worth having. And that's, that was the price discovery was part of coordinating that. But increasingly today, so many people work at jobs where they're not providing anything of value, and they know it. This is actually one of the significant contributors to the, the aimlessness and depression and anxiety in society today, is that people are working jobs that just don't matter, and they know that. It's all a farce. And they get paid and they just have to shut up and do it to get their money. So this confluence of, of work requirements and lack of connection to real value is going to make it increasingly difficult to find careers where you can pay your bills. And so people will opt to live lifestyles that they would not otherwise consider. Moving in with other people, living a lower standard of living, these sorts of things, even being homeless rather than submit to these requirements. And comfort, comfort is one of these things um, that people take for granted that has a much higher price than what society has been required to pay in living memory. And the price will become more and more apparent. Uh, same goes for homes and family. Um, just, you know, obviously where you live and how you live is a, a subset of standard of living more, more generally, but <clears throat> people take for granted the, the ability to live on your own. And like I said, a lot of people are going to have to combine households 
to cover costs as they continue to explode and how uh, as income opportunities tighten and family is going to be a big one uh, marriage is something that's taken for granted in children although less and less so with every passing day you will hear young people say um, it's just not something we can afford but you will hear that more and more and people will realize that having a family is actually a tremendous privilege with an enormous price tag and it's a price tag that normal people cannot afford and that is the underlying reality of the situation that was masked for quite some time but in conjunction with this you know for for lack of a better phrase this babylonian system this uh modern so-called service economy you, you can't afford to have a family unless you're at the top of the pyramid and uh, very few people are obviously by definition and most 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 men are just not going to get there and most women will not realize the necessity of choosing of prioritizing we'll say the resources of a man until it's too late the man they choose i mean to be their husband until it's too late they'll have too many um, mutually exclusive requirements in that search to find someone until it's too late so that you'll see increasingly <clears throat> and then there's uh, this myth of independence because we believe in our culture that everyone has a right to be independent that everyone has a capacity to be independent and that's strictly not true even today it's never been true um, it, it, you can make the illusion appear convincingly if you take the goods of a significant chunk of the population at the point of a gun and give them to the chunk of the population that could never survive independently, but that's not independence. So that illusion will thin considerably as the days go on and the real requirements of life become more and more apparent. And the, the far reduced set of people that have what it takes to contend with these increasing problems, not just because, you know, the, the let's say, income pyramid, the bottom becomes insufficient. It's, it's a much bigger picture than that. What, some of the surprise is going to come from the fact, again, to use, to employ a, a, a scriptural phrase, you'll see the last becoming first and the first becoming last in many things. You, you can't see an exceptional person except under extraordinary challenge. You, you have to have a very demanding situation for those differences to materialize and manifest. Not materialize, but to manifest for sure, to, to be visible. Um, as things move on, uh, you'll see cancel culture continue to be empowered and, and spread. And that might be a shock as to how that could be since it's so bad already. But just wait. As of now, most of the people that have been affected by this have been the, the subjects of mobs whose tools are limited to things like harassment and forceful removal from, from employment. Um, because the leaders of the organization or whoever just don't have the, the moral foundations to stand up for what's right. And they just want their money. And so they'll throw anybody under the bus once it touches their paycheck. But what you'll see is that the tools will expand into increasingly physical manifestations of violence. And we've only seen the very beginnings of this. Uh, you've seen, for example, there were mobs outside of Supreme Court justices' homes harassing them, but no one got hurt. And uh, part of the expansion of this is you're going to see people who can't afford security teams or people who can't call the police to protect them uh, with a full-time staff. More and more normal people will be subject to these things, normal. And that's that's a big theme in all of these changes is that one of the myths is is 
that these sorts of things only happen to people who are particularly public, particularly outspoken. What you're going to see is that the sacrifice is going to cascade down to normal people and normal people will have to make a decision as to whether they're going to do what's right or what's easy. And so far, the majority of modern Christians are living under the illusion that they can do that easily. And there will be a split. You're going to see people lose careers, homes, and family members left and right. Left and right. And this creates big old challenges because if you have dedicated your life to preparing for a lucrative or advancing in a lucrative career, and then it's all taken away from you by force, um, you probably have quite a sizable contingent of machinery, so to speak, in your life that requires those resources to run. You've got an enormous mortgage, you might have a large family, you might have people in and out of your family relying on your money. When all that goes away, that's a whole lot of resources that are now off the board. And so what happens? You become dependent on people that can help or the people that depended on you for help need to go somewhere else because you can no longer do anything for them. This is a really big deal. Okay, so uh, part of all of this is the government. And again, we've already seen the seeds of this, the beginnings, the shoots. But I'm telling you, it's going to get a heck of a lot worse with the government targeting specific uh, ideologies, demographics, people. And that has already happened. There have been exposures to these scandals where tax officials or whoever have been targeting certain people and not others. But you're going to find this expand and deepen. Um, one reason it's hard to see this, and I've had discussions with people in the jurisprudence field who didn't even see this and were shocked when I told them some examples of it already happening. Uh, you're going to see more and more that governments use the deficiencies of the current laws on the books and the deficiencies of the current culture in juries and prosecutors. Um, you're going to see a lot of people who you think would not be at risk for legal action having legal action taken against them. And so we have had some examples of this already, but you're going to see a lot more and it's going to be, it's the same pattern where it's, you see it cascading down to more and more normal people. So if you want to experiment on this, no one has the time for this, but you could do it. Go to your county's uh, book of laws. It's probably published online and just read through them. Just read through them and you might even be able to find some summarized charts so you don't have to go through so much legalese. You're going to find a few things. One, there's a shocking number of laws on the books. A shocking number. At, at your county level, not federal, just your county, not state. At your county level, you're going to see all kinds of crazy laws. At the state level, all kinds of crazy laws. Okay? The same thing would happen at the federal level. <clears throat> And then as you go down the list, you may find, I, how, let's see, this is how I'll say it. I'm willing to bet a substantial number of normal law-abiding citizens are actually breaking a bunch of laws. And disproportionately, there are going to be laws that are probably old, but that no one knows about, okay? That no one knows about, really. Like, What's an example of this? Maybe you have chickens and the law says you need a license for every chicken you have from your county and you don't have one or a dog or a bike. There are places where you have to license your bike and no one does it. So there are all these non-enforced laws that are still in the books even though they're not enforced. All of these things can be weaponized against someone that the government entity doesn't like. And if you think that government would never do that, this, this, so by the way, I'm not 
saying anything about government. I'm saying something about people. And people happen to be the ones in government, turns out, right? And, and you could make an argument that the worst people gravitate towards government. I think that's a safe argument to make. But um, even if it were just a random sample of the population, that means you bring all the troubles of whatever our current culture is right into there. And now you've weaponized or you've armed these people with weaponized laws that are outdated or unenforced or just plain dumb that no normal person would expect are on the books. And you say, well, OK, but, you know, that's like that's like getting busted for tax fraud when all I do is is fill fill out the simplest tax form every year. I have one job. I'm a W-2 employee. They take out the withholding. I get a refund sometimes. Life is easy, right? It, it's not complicated. I mean, it's not fun to have to pay the taxes, but it's not complicated. And you're thinking, well, only people that have complicated tax returns need to worry about being audited. Think again. The general principle I'm trying to tell you is everyone is at risk. And you will find that out. You will find that out. So it's not just the laws, it's the juries. And here's where the prosecutor comes in. So a prosecutor gets to decide in your county, your, your prosecutor can decide who to charge with crimes, okay? And they, can, they know that law book and they can pick out things to come and get you. And you say, well, why would they care about me? Well, we're in a world where basically everything you do is recorded I'm going to sound a little tinfoily here. As more and more things become public record or government record. So already the, the data center down in Bluffdale, Utah, has every phone call you've ever made, every text message you've ever sent, and every email you've ever written. They're not using it, allegedly, but they have it. So how would you like, so all these Me Too people that are getting accused from 20 years ago, 50 years ago, how would you like it if a few years from now you get a visit from some government police people saying you sent an email 20 years ago where you said X, Y, Z, we just passed a law against that and now we're arresting you. What are you going to do about it? So maybe this seems outlandish. What about as we march into a central bank digital currency? Whatever that entails, it doesn't actually matter. When the government knows every dollar you spent, where it went, etc., how easy do you think it's going to be to do this retroactive punishment stuff? where it's, you, they say, oh, uh, we see you donated $5 20 years ago to this person who at the time everyone liked and now they're canceled. So we're going to come after you for that. And maybe, so remember, we live in a culture of doxing. Maybe no one ever officially charges you with anything. Maybe some agent at some entity that has access to your data, whether it's government or not, sends an anonymous tip to someone, and then that results in the whole chain of events going off. Because you might think, well, what, why would anybody ever care about me? Well, the people around you care about you, for and against. And we live in a culture where people will lie, and they'll steal, and they'll cheat to harm people they don't like. They do it all the time. So that's where we are. Now, if you do get picked up by your county and charged with something, you might say, yeah, but we have a jury system. A jury wouldn't convict me of something I haven't done or try to pin me for something that's not really morally wrong. You know, like, okay, I didn't license my dog. I'm not going to go to jail for six months. Well... You forget that we live in a culture where accusation equals guilt and where you're not so much being tried for the crime, you're being tried for how people feel about you. That's the real charge. The challenge of the prosecutor is to get the jury 
to employ the same emotional actuation with which they live the rest of their abysmal lives to you. And so the same stupid emotional reactions they have to things that cause them to walk off their job or to not get a better job and say, you know, we should have $50 an hour for minimum wage and uh, I deserve everything in the world and steal it from anyone you have to to give it to me. And everything has to have a good guy and a bad guy. There's no such thing as subtleties or complexity and on and on, and I have to take a pill to feel good about myself and on and on and on. Those are the people who are going to decide if you're guilty or innocent. And all the jury has to do is tie you to all the boogeymen in their lives. And as soon as they do that, and it's very easy to do because these people have spent their whole lives, not just the prosecutors spending their whole lives manipulating people, but the juries have spent their whole lives being manipulated. They are well programmed to do what their, their puppet masters tell them to do based on manipulating their feelings. They have zero ability to think critically and rationally. They've never done it in their whole lives. Okay. So they're going to deploy these monsters on you. And depending on what county you live in, will, that's going to determine whether you're innocent or guilty. Not actually whether you did something wrong or not, or what the evidence is or isn't or whether the law should even exist or not. Good luck getting jury nullification from a bunch of dimwits, useful idiots. It's not going to happen. So who are enraged, who, who they manage to enrage against you, and it's not very hard. So um, where you live, it turns out it matters a lot. And more and more, there aren't counties you can go to that are safe. There's not some county where, you know, welcome to... Schmoesville, home of 10,000 people who have an IQ over, who all have an IQ over 110. And um, I don't know, are really good at playing chess. There's no place like that. Every place has the full gamut of demographics. And this, this uh, spans political ideologies. It spans like I said, IQ, it spans economic experience. Like, wouldn't it be great if whatever jury you had, you could set standards like, well, I don't want anyone on there that's never paid payroll before. You know, like, let's suppose you had a tax issue that you were had a jury trial for. And you say, well, no one on that jury, sorry, everyone on that jury should have had to do their own taxes before at least once in their lives so they know how complicated tax law is. And so you don't want a bunch of people who have only ever gone to H&R Block or can fill out the 1040 easy in three seconds because they're just a W-2 employee. And you have like this tax packet that's this thick because you're trying to do everything, all the stupid little things the IRS requires you to do. Like, seems fair enough, right? But you don't get to make that call. You're going to be surrounded by not not your peers, not really, but a random subset of the county minus all the people the prosecution gets to throw out. So guess what? <clears throat> so because of that, increasingly, we're going to face situations where, you know, historically, you didn't have to make a choice between serving God and serving the laws of man. And increasingly, you're going to have to. Um, historically, maybe the best thing I could think of, like the safe things are in other countries. So let's go with that. So suppose you lived in Nazi Germany during the ascent of Hitler, and you decided, well, I don't care what the government says, this is not something I'm supporting. So you're a dissenter, and they throw you in jail and probably kill you whatever, but you try to get away, right? Or the Nazis invade France and you get to decide if you're a French person, whether to support that or to join the underground. Well, um, you might say, well, something like that would never happen in the US. And I'm telling you that increasingly you're going to find things where maybe it will. And I'll give you one specific example. Right now, the idiots in charge 
either are so clueless or just don't care that we're marching headlong into very big military engagements that will almost surely require a draft. So if any of that ends up happening, who are they going to draft? And should you go, right? Should you go? So in the past, there were situations like Vietnam was a big stink because the question was, are you going to show up and get drafted? Or are you going to exercise means to delay that that are legal, like go to go to college? Or are you just going to go hide in the woods or go to Canada or something? And people picked from that menu of options to varying results. The situation is pretty different now because um, more than half of young people are ineligible for the draft. Why? Because they're fat or on antidepressants or, you know, just have some mental health diagnosis of some type that would be disqualifying or, or, or. So guess what the ideology the predominant ideology of people fitting that mold is. It's leftism. It's neo-Marxism. So do you think that the powers that be are going to have any problem with exempting their followers from going when they fully expect it to be some sort of a meat grinder? So who are they going to send? The same people they've always sent the patriots who who typically are not the people who are in these um, ideological enclaves they they they're sort of another form of useful folks who don't think very thoroughly about the true situation going on so now i'm backdating that comment to uh, to wars during my lifetime at least where the justification was almost entirely manufactured and the long-term impact was decidedly negative for all parties. So if that's you or that's your kid, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do when the government says, hey, we're going to round up everybody who, who's young and who has their full life ahead of them and doesn't really agree with it, basically anything that we're doing, and we're going to ship them overseas as cannon fodder. So that's a decision that you'll potentially have to face. But there are things like this that you'll be surprised how far they reach. Okay? How far they reach. We know the end point. It's the mark of the beast. And whatever the details of that are, we don't even have to figure it out. You can plot that on a graph and make a line down to right now and assume everything between those two points is going to happen. So the question is, are you going to wait around until this happens and you very obviously have to choose God or something else, including your own well-being, physical well-being? Or do you assume that that feeds down all the way to where we are now and look around you and wonder, which of these things that we have already faced and are facing are examples of the same situation. Whatever the details, uh, well, COVID was an example of this, right? Do you comply or do you keep getting, and get, keep getting your paycheck and, you know, you might have some irreversible medical condition up to and including death, or you might not notice at all. It's a toss of the dice. Or do you say no and have a guaranteed cost? And people really like having the, the option of maybe it won't hurt me. And that's an open question as to whether you can betray your conscience ever without causing harm to yourself and to others. I submit that you cannot. So as time and the situation advances, the cost to obey early that's going to increase. So you could have obey God, I mean. 
you could have seen the writing on the wall pre-COVID and said, you know, I need to get out of the system a little bit more than I am. I live in a city, maybe I should move to a suburb. I live in a suburb, maybe I should move to a rural area. I work for a huge company that adopts every little woke policy. I have to sit through meetings all the time that are nonsense. Maybe I should get a job at a smaller company and or find bosses who are less ridiculous or start my own thing. You could have done all those things. You could have gotten your kids out of public schools. You could have, again, kept them in public schools, moved to a place where the school board is less crazy and they're pushing less crazy things through public schools. But what you did instead for most, almost everyone is you looked at the current situation and you say, well, this I'm okay with. I don't like it. But the cost of this is less than what the alternative is. But unfortunately, in evaluating that alternative, you did not look at what that cost might be for staying. And so you said, well, I'm okay with them pushing porn in public schools and all this other crazy stuff. Um, but you're probably not okay with what comes five steps later. And it's no mystery. They're already, the writing's on the wall of where it's going. If the principles aren't there, I don't mean the school principal. In moral principles. If they're not there now, they're not going to be there then. So what else can come through that same door that is already open? No changes need to occur. What can just waltz right in? I, I was catching up with my mom last night, and she was saying how the high school I went to, which was regarded as the best school around, um, because I was there. Just kidding. Uh, you know, it was a public school, but it was it was a magnet school. It was regarded as a really good school, and. Um, she said there were two huge shootings there recently, and it wasn't even students. The parents came because the kids got in a fight. The parents came with guns and shot it out. <laughs> and that's, I mean, it's ridiculous. That's just insane. So people are reverting to animals all around us. And it, I told her, I said 20 years ago, all the parents would have pulled the kids out of school, not that school, out of school and made a way to do homeschooling. But nowadays, you just throw up your arms and you just say, well, what can I do? Like, at a minimum, you can teach your kids to be a man who can support a family or be a woman who chooses a man that can support a family. That you can do at a minimum. Because even if it's true that it's too late for you to provide that sort of thing, then it's still, you can make sure it doesn't happen again with your own kids, but that doesn't happen either. So these are things to think about and prepare for early because as the cost to prepare for them increases, sorry, the, because the cost of them, the cost to prepare for these things will, will it will continue to increase. And if you're not willing to pay the price now, you're probably not going to be willing to pay a much greater price later. And that's the benefits are going to stay the same or get smaller. That's the thing you're up against. So I encourage you to make whatever changes you need to to be less, um, less subjected to these, these uh, influences of people who will consider you an offender just because they say so or because someone said so. And people who will try to force you to do things that you don't think are right under penalty of livelihood or reputation or your house or your way of uh, your standard of living. So get to the places where you're safer from those um, those impulses of human nature because they're going to get a lot worse.